Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for being here to our facilities workshop. Mr. Clinch is finishing up. So when he gets here, I guess we'll turn it, well, we'll turn it over to Dr. Pace. Get us started. Thank you, Mr. Booth and members of the board. I'm going to turn it directly over to Mark and the team because we have a full agenda okay. and an hour because then we have our pre-board arts moment that we don't want to miss. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Pace. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is the facilities update. We'll be updating you on three projects, Neo City Academy, Michigan Ave Elementary School, Harmony Middle School, and we'll start with Neo City Academy. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Philip Donovan. This is our agenda. I'm sorry. And I'll turn it over to Philip Donovan with Little Diversified Architects. Sure. Good afternoon. Uh, hey. Thank you again. Oh, Jay's it coming. Jay's it coming. Come on, get close. <laughs> oh, <no>, Jay. <laughs> I wouldn't want to sit Sorry. Jay. I tried, it's okay. I tried to escape. It's a perfect time. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so I'm going to give an update. We are in the middle of our design development phase. We are currently working with Gil Bain on pricing and constructability reviews. We've been um, taking into consideration comments from the school district as well as um, uh, those other comments that have been solicited. So again, I wanted to touch base on the key project criteria. It's a STEM curriculum high school. It's 500 student stations, 45,000 square feet, uh, centered around engineering, biomedical, and cybersecurity curriculum tracks. It's, it's located in New York City. Uh, it's, uh, designed around a highly immersive learning environment. So the, the key is to provide flexible, scalable, and prototypical classrooms that can be transformed uh, over the course of a day, a week, or a year uh, for those different um, curriculum mm -hmm. courses that we have. Um, we're designing a high performance, uh, zero energy building, zero ready. So the benefits of this is reduced energy costs, reduced maintenance time and costs, and creating healthy, happier learning spaces. And we know we can do this within the typical construction techniques that we utilize currently. Um, targeted budget is $10 million construction cost. And again, we have a very focused design and construction schedule. It's moving very quickly, and we appreciate all the input. We've had great input and participation from the stakeholders, um, the core curriculum stakeholders, as well as the facility stakeholders. So what's been driving the design? Like we said, um, this was a list generated from the kickoff session. Having an immersive learning environment, the active learning, the fact that these students are going to be attending this school uh, because they want to be there and they want that next level of education. High performance building facility. So you can see these are the things that we have up on the screen as we work through design on this project. Um, in terms of schedule, right in the middle of the purple flag there, design development with the next deliverable on the 6th of April. Again, school uh, will open in that facility in August of 2019. So we had our project kickoff with stakeholders on in um, December. We've been actively working through there. You can see the amount of meetings we've had. We had space plan approval on uh, January 30th. We had we submitted schematic design on the um, 9th of February, and we had an MEP systems approval on the 23rd of February. And those are all associated with meetings and feedback from the stakeholder groups. Um, so at this point, we're going to talk about what the building looks like and how we're going to anticipate um, functions of that building and the need for safety and security of the student body first. And what I wanted to give a brief overview of is it's, this is not a typical school that we're, we've, tip, we've constructed in Osceola County. Um, because it's of its proximity or its location in Neo City and the guidelines of Neo City, which is a very urban environment, the school needs to front the street. It has to have frontage all the way along Neo City Boulevard. Um, we have to put parking in the back. So we have to somehow come to terms with the fact that we've got a building frontage along a street with all the parking and visitors in the rear. And so like in a typical urban school that we would design, the building entry is actually in the back of the school, for instance. Uh, but what I'd like to t say is change that. The, the building front is the, ba is the back of the school. This is the, this is the front of the school. It provides, the building provides a facade to Neo City Boulevard, but um, the, the entry and the, the point of, um, of impact is, is back here, which is facing south. So parent drop-off, bus drop-off, student and visitor entry. So you're looking at the main walkway in here into um, the school. We've got administration over here. So we're designing around crime prevention through environmental design. Some of those drivers up that discuss, that talk about visibility eyes on um, the environment. So um, 
we have entry doors that is a lockable vestibule, it's an airlock, and you can only enter into that um, admin, and then you must be buzzed out of that admin into the rest of the school. Beyond that, we're looking at different la layers of security. So the next layer of security within that school is to lock down the next space and not provide access to all the academic spaces. Uh, before we get there, we're, we're working through the landscape element is we're going to be separating the students and the activities that happen on campus and out on the grounds from that visitor entry. So there will be a controlled entry point for visitors um, and, and we're going to make sure that, that they know that this is the point of entry and that they have no access to the student body on that side. This canopy is covering the outdoor learning space, um, outdoor eating and collaboration space. Um, here you can see it. So that's the main school entry. This is what we're calling the mixer and is the double height uh, space where the school can um, come together and join in larger events. But, but this will be separated um, through the use of fences, um, landscaping. And I just want to say I'm glad you have our attorney walking in the door. Go back one if slide. Go back. <laughs> there he is. Well, Mr. The white shirt, the white shirt. <laughs> but again, the, the briefcase. The, the, the things that we know from <coughs> events like Newtown and the current event is, is visibility really is better. We, we know that. Okay. Um, and, and the sooner that we can get help and we can control the situation, the more we know. Um, so we can, we can look at uh, bullet resistant glazing, I'm sorry, uh, and some of these locations as well. Um, so we're, we're evaluating all of that. So if you approach this project from Neo Silly Boulevard, if you drove across Billback and you were driving up Neo Silly Boulevard to the west, this is um, the view of the facade. So again, we have, a, we have a frontage along the street, but we don't have an entry there. All visitors need to come down a very well landscaped path and enter the building. Um, there, is, there is an exit <coughs> off the stairwell for That's egress correct. purposes. There's egress exits here and here. But it's not an entrance. Um, those would, if somebody had a key card, they might be able to get in. We're still discussing that, but um, that's how that would work. So here's the front of that facade. So again, we're utilizing tilt wall construction like we have been. Um, we've got a mixture of gla glazing and some areas where the interest where things from inside begin to become present on the outside. What's happening in the school? And that glazing is a slight reduction from what I shared with you last week, this week. Uh, we started at what percentage? 39%. 39%, we're down to 29%, and we're using it in very select ways. So you can see we're standardizing the punches for the classrooms, um, getting the right amount of light and vision in there, and then we're, we're allowing um, some of the other areas to break out, and you can you get to see what's Both happening. Both cost and HVAC loading. So we, Correct. It's a balance. <laughs> this is at the Y of the building, if you've seen the plan where the building splits and the wing swings south. So we feel like this is a really nice breakout space. So the corridors aren't just straight corridors. They're places where learning happens. They're places where students and teachers might break out and uh, meet and collaborate. So we felt like this opens on to um, an outdoor classroom space, which again, should be secure. Um, this is that double height space, the mixer we're calling it, but this is where the school collects and um, opens out onto that outdoor space. <laughs> and in an aerial view from the uh, south looking north, so we're looking at you know, how do we form that canopy, how do we create a look for the school that talks about high tech. Could I ask you, because that is the area that you're trying to part. Yes, good. That's the right term mm -hmm. today. Sure. Um, so, so what's that going to look like? I mean, because to be honest with you, I'm concerned. I think as all these members would be about the security of our students. Absolutely. But certainly, I don't want to see that area go away as a space that students can use to be outside to do things outside. So, I mean, I think it's a. I mean, at a, at a very simple explanation, it's a mixture of fencing and landscaping. Okay. So, so there isn't direct access. If you if you were a visitor and you want, that's to where I was here, getting to. Yeah. So I think it happens along this we'll wall. We'll probably here. have some Omega fence that'll be in Omega. there. That's very low profile. That's not not obtrusive, but it's you know very secure. And some and some landscaping that talks about that. We, mm -hmm. the, the intent of the school is also to engage the Neo City community, so the students and, and absolutely. Um, so there's some mixture there, but it's going to be well controlled. And so again, those people coming in will be. Um, asked to, to um, present themselves as visitors like everybody else. But I think around uh, the white would be where the parking starts. So the green is really um, where 
wouldn't change. We would sur uh, surround the perimeter with okay. fencing and control it that way. With, okay. with the landscaping to soften that more industrial look. That's right. Gotcha. We feel there's some opportunities out here to berm some areas for um, outdoor um, instruction or um, you know, this could be a place, the drone landing strip. You know, just things that we want to stretch and think of blue sky thinking, give the teachers opportunities to, to utilize the okay. whole space. Right. Did you mention some of the materials I was talking to you about? Yes, I team? shared those with Philip, and we're, we're looking at all of those. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, the last piece, we, we did, we've done a fly-through so that it wasn't just static images. So it, it starts before dawn, and th this would be the, uh, I think this went to about 11 a.m. So this would be a track through. Um, school. But keep in mind, we're well, still at schematic design, so there's a lot of sure. tweaking left to do. It's amazing that we can have this level of detail at this point in the design process. But we feel that this space can be locked down after hours as well, and that's also another layer of security. So during the day, if somebody made it through admin, the they, they wouldn't necessarily make it beyond this point. That becomes a point of security again. Um, but here's an open, flexible lab for collaboration that can be closed. Um, different modalities of teaching and working in that space, just through furniture usage. Here we're walking down the first floor hallway to the west, so we have um, teacher workspace that would have eyes on that mixing space, a large space, and then you've got labs and um, collaboration spaces on either side of the hallway. So at this point, uh, after, you know, we're beginning in the design development phase to add color, so that's where we're beginning to, uh, going to work from at this point. And then can, it's the ocean of Neo City, but we don't <laughs> we'll be adding that information as we go. Um, and the, the trees are just representational for scale. We'll be uh, progressing through that as we progress through the landscape. You say we grew, we grew a big tree there pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can afford to buy a tree that big and plant it. Not in the budget. And so that's the road. That's yes. the road. And you're, so we're 10 feet off of, of that to include the sidewalk. and. Um, so you can see we're fronting the street and we're creating that urban um, facade element. And we're highlighting, you know, these are mixer uh, fab labs that um, are flexible learning spaces. And so there's opportunities for signage and graphics to come could, out onto the street. Could you go back just a little bit? I don't know if you can go backwards or not. I can't. Um, <laughs> there, there's a spot right there on the road where the glass kind of protrudes out a little bit. How far is that from the road? Ten feet. The close to ten feet. The closest any po yeah, the building, the closest thing to the road is ten feet, and everything works back from there. And there are some punches, so they're they, they go recessed from there. The and that, closest and to the well, I'm saying, even if, even if I'm not talking about a and between the road and the yeah. sidewalk will be a bike path, so that that so provides was, further. Support. I like that. I think it's awesome. But if somebody were to get in a wreck. At that area, then there's kids, glass, road. If you've been injured or otherwise the victim. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's you know the, again there's a bike path which provides some buffer, and okay. then the sidewalk. So someone would actually have to encroach that bike path to get onto the sidewalk okay. area. Yeah. And it is a wide, well, I, I mean, ten foot sidewalk. So, are you good? Yes. Yeah, that's eight it. Foot. Sorry, I think foot sidewalk. Board. I love it. I love it. A lot. It doesn't look like a, it looks like something different. Did you guys incorporate? Mr. Meacham had originally wanted like um, almost like Mount Rushmore like images of the five of us embedded <laughs> in, in the building. Did you guys incorporate that at all? Yeah, we, found, we, we just settled with a plaque. We found a form liner that will go in when they pour the concrete. Yeah. So it can be. Mike, you um, did want that, right? Yeah. It was the first thing we had to cut. <laughs> value in that out. Uh, Kelvin, do you have anything? No, I concur with Clarence. I think that um, I think it looks it looks. If this is what we're starting from, can't wait to see the finished product. Well, and and from this point, we are now very close to producing those renderings 
so that we can have information to start marketing the school. And we've got Gilbane now under pre-construction services. So they're working hand in glove yep. with Little. Uh, we're doing all kinds of shreds behind the scenes, doing trade-offs with mechanical systems and, and you know, the skin of the building. And th so those, are, those elements have pretty well been nailed down now. That's why we settled on our percent of glazing. Yep. So, we, so know, we know what the, uh, the outside of the building is going to look like and be made of. So, so now it's a lot, all the other little trade-offs. And as I shared with you, we had started with a space planning exercise to determine how to allocate all those spaces. And it has been great to have Principal Meacham Absolutely. involved in the process. He has been at every meet meeting and interjecting the learning component part of this. So with all the objectives that we have for this project, the immersive learning is always a non-negotiable. We always are, come back to that to make sure that that will work for the objective and this of this is project. Such a, this is such a custom design. It's not a prototype. So we absolutely would not be at this point if we didn't have that close collaboration from the curriculum side, who already had all the answers. You know, every time we ask the question, it, it, you know, I was there with the answer. Here, yeah. this is how big it needs to be. Oh, great. I know it's well, really early, but the targeted cost of 10 million has Gilbane weighed in at all yet? Oh, they, they say it's 15, but we're we're working on that. <laughs> we're, we're meeting with we're well, meeting five, with them. Five million on 75 yeah. doesn't worry me. Five yeah. million on 10. Yes, and we're the, so we met with them yesterday. We're meeting with them a minimum of once a week, if not more, as as needed. So we're hoping we're getting very close on those numbers and. Um, we're, we work through trade-offs, so which mechanical system is right, so we, we price three different mechanical systems, so to see how that then affects envelope and those kind of things. So it's kind of intricately weaved and making Who's making right sure we're just not getting mechanical systems we can afford versus ones that work? When we had made that decision, our assistant superintendent of operations was in the room, our director of maintenance, to make sure that it was a, not only a system that was efficient, but could be easily maintained as well. And also keep in mind that we are pursuing various partnerships. You know, we're looking at flooring companies. We're looking at the FF&E to, to pilot and partner with us, Siemens to possibly provide a lab. So we're going to continue to look at bringing in those partnerships. Gilbane, as part of their presentation, had offered to assist us with corporate smart partnerships. So we're going to take full advantage of that as well so that we can lower that cost um, and, and stay within uh, that 10 million construction. So my initial feedback, and I shared it with you the other day, but it's first chance getting to talk to the rest of the people engaged, uh, great work. I love what it is. I like, I like the look of it. I like where you're going. Um, I really enjoyed and appreciated the conversation you and I had the other day and how you walked me through the thought process of the various elements of, of incorporating uh, nanotechnology and biotechnology and environment and all these other components to come up with what the vernacular of the building was going to be. So kudos to the team. I'm really pleased with where we are. You're welcome. That's what I was going to say. I, I mean, to look at to all the systems that you guys put in place to say this is how we're going to design it. We're going to make it look look like this. I think it fits this, the Neo City. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I hope we end up I hope that our going from 10 to 15, or 15 to 10 doesn't take all this away, <laughs> but certainly uh, I think we're on the right track. And, I hope and even though this, the building is certainly cutting edge, all the systems that we're using are tried and true systems. Yeah. We're not we're not yes. having a, a science experiment here. This mm -hmm. everything is going to be very <laughs> well thought through. Yes. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> But one of the things that I have made sure that the whole team was aware of, you know, Mark's team starting with them, is that all of our projects have to comply with the statutory requirements of maximum per student station cost. They have to. That's mm -hmm. non-negotiable. Right. Regardless of where we feel about the way DOE interpreted mm -hmm. the rest of that language, Correct. that is very clear in the statute. So that can't move. Yes. Right. And that is something that we're now working through on the front end of our projects Not the to ensure, end. yes, to ensure that we will be in compliance. Because with the Florida statute, we have to be in compliance. That that's a non-negotiable. Yeah, it's the beauty of getting uh, the CM Gilbane on early, and this isn't their first rodeo with this type of construction either. So they know the the trip falls to look for. Yeah, and you guys know that philosophically this board prides itself on being able to talk to our stakeholders about how efficient we are with the use of taxpayer dollars. And 
and so it's not just the compliance aspect of it it's also honoring the desire and the will of, of the board and what it is that we've always set out to achieve and how we manage these uh, these investments by the local residents all right thanks team thank, thank you guys thank you On michigan, awesome. avenue. michigan ave i'll ask mr bill zecker and john quatron to join us at the table good evening guys Hello. Yeah. Is it evening yeah. already? Ah. Don't tell me that. <laughs> I guess we're there. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you uh, for having us here tonight uh, to kind of give you a quick update on where we're at and appreciate, obviously, the uh, approval to move forward with the project. And we did get our notice to proceed on the 23rd of February. So we're feverishly working through getting our subcontractors on board uh, and getting all those processes started as well as getting work started on site. This is just an image of the school uh, as you can see it and what it's going to look like as a finished product. Just wanted to just remind everybody. The next slide is an image of the overall site and what that will ultimately be at the end of the completion of the project as well. To give you kind of an update in the phasing, just to kind of discuss that, there was an early works piece that we've done and we're under the, there was a few changes that occurred during the course of that. We added some additional work that needed to be done for some storm drainage down around the so right in here is the early piece that we did, which was to relocate the, yeah, the storm. Yeah, to relocate the uh, cover play areas and the basketball courts so those would be allowed to be able to continually operate uh, while we're out in front building in the school. So that work is actually going to be completed and turned over uh, to the uh, school on Friday. Uh, they're actually sodding it tomorrow, so it'll be turned over on Friday for use uh, right. to the school. Now, the other piece that we are just getting ready to start is the temporary access road. Um, that's going to be done through the uh, break, uh, spring break. We're actually going to create a new entrance. It'll come off of Michigan Avenue, back in, tie into here. It'll be our new temporary parent drop off. It's going to be this area here. And our bus loop is actually going to get put in over here, a temporary bus loop is going to be constructed during that holiday window. So, again, this is the phasing. Of this is the last phase of the project. As you can see, the construction of the um, second pond associated with the uh, bus loop and parking lot and sports fields, and then the renovations of Building 3 as well. That will all be done from March of 2019 through uh, August of 2019 for final project completion. So when the staff and students return for, uh, from spring break next year, they'll move into their, their new building yes. and, uh, and their cafeteria as well. Uh, so in this final phase, We'll demo the existing school and build out the remaining site amenities. And we should be starting St. Cloud about that time. Yes. Finish to start with St. Cloud Middle School. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, as the, the project was approved on February the 20th here in the board meeting, uh, the total project was $24,709,619 <coughs> dollars. Notice proceed was received on the 23rd. Uh, we have sent in our initial sales tax savings goal uh, change order, which was $3,706,532. That's actually been in process, and now we are working to get the subcontractors on board as well to substantiate that. Um, and this is consistent that. with our new ODP goal, 20% for comprehensive renovations. Of course, we'll be looking to uh, for opportunities to improve that along the way. Absolutely. Uh, and then the procurement process, as I said, is underway. A few milestone dates coming forward, just so everybody understands. Billing pad is uh, for both building one and two are to be completed around April the 4th. Uh, building drying by September the 17th. Uh, we're actually looking to improve that date right now. Um, so that's the date uh, that we have established as the date that we have to get to. Free power of December the 26th. Mechanical equipment start up by January the 28th with substantial completion March the 6th and, and again owner move in through that spring break and uh, completed by March the 15th of 2019. The second phase milestones is there's an abatement process that has to occur, a small amount. That would be completed by April the 9th of 2019 uh, with the selective demo of building three being completed by April the 16th. Uh, classroom demo uh, of the existing building being tore down and completed and removed by April the 25th. Field and parking lot main, main grading scope of work being completed by May the 16th. Free power again for building three would be June the 27th with mechanical equipment start up by July 1st. Bus loop canopy drop-offs completed by July the 22nd. 
again a substantial completion of July the 24th with an owner move in expected to be July the 26th. That would be for building three. That would be, this is all related to this last phase and that would be building three, yes. Are there any questions? Well, I'm just happy that it looks, that looks as if, and I don't want to jinx it, that we won't have the problem that we have with DOE moving forward. So, excited to hear that. Right, and, and the jury is still out. You know, we still have the spot survey that we need to submit for this mm -hmm. project as uh, uh, DOE or the, the state hopefully accepts the new language. I understand that the House bill went through yesterday uh, that speaks to a portion of this. So, local money is House and Senate. Waiting on the governor's signature. Waiting mm -hmm. on the governor's signature. So we're waiting Kudos on. Kudos to our lobbying team, and I know Mr. Thacker and I had a chance to meet with Speaker Corcoran, and wonderful. Uh, we got there. That's awesome. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> we're at ninety-five percent now. <laughs> All right. Um, then the le le just a quick update on the status of where we're at. Uh, insurance certificates have been issued. Bon uh, performance and bon payment bonds have also been issued. Our trailers being mobilized and set up on uh, starting the week of the twelfth. 75% uh, of our major trades are bought out as today. We hope by the end of this week all major trades will be bought out. Um, and then, of course, the submittal process is underway. Uh, dewatering permit, uh, there is a dewatering permit that's in place. However, it needs to be modified because it wasn't really <coughs> formulated quite correctly on what we're having to do. So we're working with the design designers right now to get that corrected, and we'll be working to have that in hand by no later than March the 20th. Seventh, it probably won't be that long. That was just kind of the worst case date. Um, and then we're currently developing a more detailed uh, project schedule. We've submitted a project schedule with our GMP, but we're expanding that now with uh, as we're getting subcontractors on board. So, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Very good. Well, thank you. The folks in that area are ready for their new. John. The folks in that area and the teachers. Oh, and yes. Ready, <laughs> ready for that upgraded school. And I'll ask our Sherry. next presenters to join us for Middle School A8 Project Update. Sherry Warner with Moss and Associates and Patrick Roush with uh, Schenkel Schultz <coughs> Architects. Let's not talk about worst case scenario dates in this one. Let's just <laughs> talk about getting it done. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, first item on here is regarding the uh, Army Corps Engineering South Florida Water Management Permit. Um, Essentially, we decided early on that we're going to do the offsite mitigation, and there's a process we have to go through. We submit to South Florida Water Management prior to getting our permit through Army Corps Engineering. So where we are right now is we're sort of working with South Florida. I think we've, we've kind of supplied everything we need. Um, our civil engineer and the environmental consultant have supplied everything we need uh, from a permitting standpoint, from the art engineering um, point of view. And I might understand now that until they can officially, they can't officially respond or resubmit to South Florida until there's some litigation or contractual issues that have to be resolved. Can you explain that? Because the last time we had this meeting, it was going to be submitted like on a Friday, and it was a week after that, and then right. it's. And I think maybe Mr. Kreppenbacher might that, want to address that since we he's been working all right, afternoon uh, to make sure where we were with the litigation piece. As of right now. <laughs> I think we have all the hands out of the pot. Uh, Rhonda, I believe, has the conservation easements for you to execute tonight, Mr. Chairman. Good, it's been signed. I signed it about an hour ago. Um, we have learned that the attorneys at Swift Mud are good. The staff planning person at Swift Mud may not have, based upon today, is out till tomorrow, but should have no issues, but those two haven't communicated. So as of now, we are aware of absolutely no issues that should be raised. Right. But they have, what, have we started the 30-day clock ticking? When will they that? have not, our consultants have not now, submitted the The documents. informal submittal was made on Tuesday, February 27th. And the local reviewer directed our uh, civil engineer to be allowed to review that. So that was a week ago before, um, and, and asking the civil engineer to wait until that informal review was completed before submitting <coughs> the formal review. And that's when the 30-day clock starts. 
So we don't have our formal submissions not even there yet? No, sir. W what does this informal review for do for us? This was to review some previous review comments had to do with the title commitment and the O&E report. I'm looking for Rhonda, would you like to join us? Uh, Rhonda has been intimately involved in the permitting. <laughs> Sorry. She's been very diligent <laughs> in moving this issue we forward. We had to satisfy the mineral rights issue. And there were, uh, they initially only wanted a description of the property. Then when we submitted that, they asked, oh, no, we need an entire survey of the property. Then, oh, no, we need a survey without the easements on it. So and yes, we've been a lot of hoops. We're only allowed three reviews by South Florida. They will do an automatic denial and refuse the permit. So we've already used two of those. Both were in January, um, December. And as Mark said, one was kicked back for things like they didn't want to accept our sketch of description. They wanted a full boundary survey. They never asked for it. So <laughs> it's just been little things like that. So the preliminary review this time is to ensure we're going to get all approvals because if we get another denial, it's a full denial of the permit and starting over. So we've asked for the preliminary review to make sure they're not going to kick anything back. So if we hear from Lisa tomorrow, um, we expect to do a full formal submittal tomorrow that will allow that to go through, which starts the 30-day clock. But since we'll have full pre-approval, we're hoping it's going to be a quick turnaround. We're not sure why it would take a full 30 days, but the fact that they have the right to take 30 days we can't promise you they won't exercise that right. This thing they kicked it back for back in January, mm -hmm. was that in their original request for information or whatever submittal stuff, or is that a change just because of this project? They've decided so, that so they why don't accept they mineral rights anymore, and this property had mineral rights on it. So we had to show that all the mineral but rights it didn't had have been But it didn't have mineral rights. Well, we had to show they had been exhausted. So we just got that formal clearance. So last is that? Friday. But I guess my question is: Is that something new? From what we yes. can tell, yes, that, they that have accepted new. properties in the yes. past with mineral rights, but they are no longer, due to a total destruction that happened in the Panhandle by a developer that exercised their mineral rights and destroyed a conservation area. So they're no longer accepting that. Option. I guess. I mean, I don't know who who does this stuff, but I would hope we're using people who know as the rules change. So we don't get caught up in these delays. On a positive note, board, I was unclear until just this morning when I spoke more in depth with Mr. Clinch. The project can move forward once we get the South Florida Water Management District permit and then wait for the Army Corps of Engineers. We just can't go through the wetlands until we get that Army Corps permit. So it wouldn't necessarily stop work or halt the beginning of the project as long as that South Florida Water Management permit permit does come through. When, when is the beginning? What's the beginning date? As soon as our, we get South Florida. And our, our late date. No, but I mean, don't we, we have a projected start date of the March? 20th of March, March yeah, 20th March is, the is our late date. date. We're hoping to to beat that date. Okay. But that is the late date for the start of construction. So if we get something from them the tomorrow? Finish date without doing something like if we get something from them before the 20th, we're still in, in good shape. It's how long it drags on after that would be something we'd have to look at. Okay. So I'm worst sure. case scenario now is that they wait 30 days and then deny it on like April 6th. But we're not even at 30 well, days yet. But we'll know we're about not. the denial because we're not going to submit the formal if they're indicating any kind of denial. So we, we hope to have formal pre-approval tomorrow, which means when we submit it, it should all be good to go. And if they give us that tomorrow, we will submit the same day or first thing the next morning? I would have to check it won't take a week or something. but I would expect it's there all in their no office ready to load it. Correct. On a notice that it's, it's an electronic it's submission. It's an electronic okay. system. Yeah. Have we learned things during this process that will ensure we don't face these type of challenges in the future or that we overcome them more expediently? I understand there's some yes. things that are about out of our control. But and I these are some of the things that we talked about. For us too. Yes. These are some of the things we talked about in our previous facilities workshops when we were looking at the different paths. And if you recall, one of those paths was to purchase mitigation credits that would have exhausted one of those banks. And quick draw bank. That's really what South Florida Water Management District was encouraging. However, that was substantial additional cost. Right. So we, and that was over 700,000. Right. We looked at a path, path B, which was 408,000. 
which was based on an estimate on the credits that would have to be purchased. When we finally got the exact read from the South Florida Water Management District, they added 0.37. That brought it from 408 to the 513,700. And that's the item that we approved at the board meeting uh, on February 20th. So that is in place as a backup plan should this current new newer path to avoid any purchase of any mitigation credits fail. Tim, I think there's one other thing that, that I mentioned to Dr. Pace that I recommend to Mark. When we have an issue, we have to have one person on it and everybody else can talk with that person but there can't be 10 person people in the middle of it. Sure. Part of what we we were having to unplug people, which was creating too much confusion. So my recommendation is that as we go forward and they'll do it, we say this person's in charge of this issue. We don't want to hear 19 different people talk. You figure out how to get it to the goalpost. Okay. Good. And I think part of this was it was such an abbreviated schedule. Right, yes, try to we, get it done quick. Exactly. <coughs> yes. So I certainly early. can what appreciate if, that. Not that we, we certainly needed to learn some things, but mm -hmm. because it was such a shortened schedule, yes. I understand the challenges. We were hoping we didn't have to deal with the bureaucracy, that, but we're filling it in full effect here. So. You know, when we started the process, you're absolutely right, Mr. Chairman, when the project was moved up one year, we saw the Army Corps PIP permit on the critical path. That week, we immediately mm -hmm. went and met with the Army Corps and we came to a really good plan. The Army Corps of Engineers was very cooperative. Uh, we did not anticipate the level of issues that we received from the South Florida Water Management District. So another lesson learned is when we start one of these quick uh, turnaround permitting projects that we go meet with both agencies. Thank you. So let's hope we can stay on schedule for March 28th. If that's the ground March twentieth. Twenty eighth is the groundbreaking. So yeah. <laughs> right. Oh yes, for the groundbreaking. Yes. yes. Well, both those dates. I mean, the twentieth is more important, but uh, certainly we don't want to. Unless okay. we're groundbreaking, we're not partying. Just a quick update from where we were from the last meeting. Um, we have issued one owner change order that the board has approved for the direct purchase order. So we've already started that process. I think we um, allocate about 1.25 million in ODPs. Um, that's going to go up. We'll probably ask for another <coughs> deductive change order here because of the major trades that are going through the process right now. Yeah, we uh, did the two million just to get them started, so they wouldn't start off upside down. So this is a new <laughs> greenfield project. So the new ODP goals are 30 percent for the greenfield projects, and we will uh, working hope, hard hope to, to find ways that. to exceed yes, sir. that. Yes, sir. Um, that, Tim, what is the 30% based on? 30% for new greenfield projects is our ODP goal, 20% for it's comprehensive It's 20% of the direct cost of work. So if, you, if, you're, if half of your work is material and the other half is labor, the best you could ever do is 50%. Mm -hmm. I agree. And in this, right now in our market, labor is, is more expensive than, mm -hmm. than materials. Mm -hmm. So it makes it very challenging to, get, to hit those goals, but we've got everything in place to, to do that. And everything 2500 or more is fair game. So we, we've had some recently some kitchen uh, upgrades, the serving line upgrades, some chiller projects. <coughs> it's heavy on equipment and we've come you know close to the 50% mark on those. Um, so the ODP um, deduct was the two million and which equates to roughly about 75,000 in sales tax savings so that'll continue to increase. We did a uh, contingency transfer the gopher tortoise uh, permitting and relocation that the school district asked us to, yes, to have, have done. To it has been submitted um, and we are waiting for that permit. So we expect that um, ahead of the South Florida Water Management Permit. Once we can get out there and start putting in the silt fence, um, we'll start removing the gopher tortoises that are on site. So we're not going to be waiting for that? No. In no. late March to move? No. It's, it's our understanding that we should receive that before the 
Maybe March twentieth date. <laughs> on our groundbreaking on the twenty eighth, do we need everybody to go grab a gift for Tori? <laughs> <laughs> Take it yeah, home that's with them. Again. Yeah, that's a gift. <laughs> <laughs> we could hand out recipes for turtle <laughs> soup. <laughs> I wasn't going that far, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had them on my property. So the good news is we do have our construction trailer permit already. We do have the um, school district uh, building permits and site permits. So all of those are in place. Um, we did receive approval from Florida uh, Forestry to do an on-site burn permit. Um, so Junior Davis has already requested that. Um, it was done around some of the adjacent sites and it also I think was done on, on one of your recent projects. We're continuing on with our regular weekly or bi-weekly uh, OAC meeting, so we are continuing that with understanding your processes and, and getting ODPs and uh, things through. Um, we're vetting out RFIs and submittals. Right now we've issued about 55, and I think it's actually gone up since we put this um, uh, presentation together. We've gotten all the major trade submittals um, vetted out and approved. Uh, Schenkel Schultz has done a great job on executing those. Um, we have some ODP materials that are scheduled to uh, be delivered to the site if we can get uh, space on the site, which is around March 28th. So um, that's storm drainage structures if, if that is able to happen. So we have materials ready to come. Um, and then we've done some regular BIM uh, building information modeling. So we've done some clash detection. The design team, uh, your staff has also been a, a part of that. Um, working out some of those details ahead of schedule. That's what that little graphic there off to the side was indicating that there was a chase wall, there was a conflict with the chase wall, and they were able to, to find that using the BIM model, looking at the plans, it wasn't obvious. Yeah, move a wall instead of, you know, uh, affecting some of the plumbing and what have you. So, so far the, the process has been very successful, uh, over 100 conflicts which equates to less RFIs and potential change orders. And, time. and prefabrication of materials. Right. So they're, they're ready to go once, once we can get the BIM model, everybody signs off on it. Um, just the, the schedule, hoping that we get that March 20th permit um, so that we can start. Uh, we talked about the Gopher Tortoise relocation. Um, once we get the South Florida Water Management Permit, we can start working in the upland areas that we talked about, getting in um, probably a temporary fence around the site, and then um, continuing on with the silt fence. So I guess my question is, say we go to, let's just say we go to April 20th. We've called March 20th kind of our, our date that we could complete this in a normal fashion. So. I guess my question would be if things don't go the way that we anticipate, that we plan, and, and hopefully our team, and, and we've got all this handled, <coughs> when is that date that we just absolutely know it is not going to open in August of 2019? That, that's not an option. Uh, so if we don't get the March 20th and it goes the month or 45 days or 60 days, I've already had discussions with uh, Moss and Associates uh, um, principal in charge and we are looking at accelerating various trades. So on the front end versus the five days with, as an example, 10 pieces of equipment, we'd be looking at seven days with 20 pieces of equipment doubling the crews so that we can get the building pads in place, get the under slab utilities, get the slab on grade, accelerating those trades right up to the steel. And, and the tilt panels where perhaps we have to bring on two cranes instead of the one. Maybe we have to import some soil to the site versus having to wait to get the soil from the back of the site. So we, we're looking at various acceleration yeah. options. And Mr. Everything Chairman. Everything you just mentioned costs more money. It will, it will. And so I guess, I guess maybe, let me phrase this question differently. <laughs> what is the date when we start accelerating the district's cost of this project? March 21st. You know, we April probably 21st. have some leeway. I, th I would say we would have, we March probably 20th. have some a little bit of <coughs> leeway, but um, we're looking at three different scenarios. So, to Mark's point, we we talked to um, facilities and we're evaluating internally the schedule for a 30-day impact, 45-day, and a 60-day impact. Okay. And then, based on that impact internally, we're going to bring in the major trade subs, sit down with them, and talk about what impact that does. Do we need to have additional crews? 
cost there is a period of you know if it's five days maybe it's I, even I, yeah. seven we can probably manage that but i do want to remind everybody we we, we are going into the rainy season mm -hmm. so we're going to do everything we can to mitigate that based on when we do get the permit but we want to present some scenarios to facilities and okay. and just look at what that impact so, could potentially so we, i guess what i'm hearing is i've got a 60-day window essentially that we could still get it done with some cost escalation. But then beyond that, we're going to have to start looking at other yeah. options. We, we may that have, a fair assessment? I think we could go longer than the two months, but we would be looking at more aggressive acceleration. However, then the risk to the district increase. So okay. the point of the acceleration is to get the schedule, get the project back on schedule on the front end versus being delayed in the end and not having that smooth landing that we need for the owner to have the proper time for all the owner activities, FF&E, technology, you know, working through um, uh, testing, training with the owner. Okay. And I, and I think, Mark, to Mark's point, there, there is the ability to work with the major traits, the site contractors, the driver, the tilt wall, the concrete subcontractor. So do you add another crew? Do you work, you know, instead of five days, work six days, seven days? And I think that's where we want to look at and evaluate first internally, because at some point when you start accelerating schedule and you it, it require subcontractors to work so many hours, the productivity sac is Absolutely. sacrificed. Sure. So that's we want to make sure that we look at the different scenarios and present the, the best okay. possible solutions to the to facilities. Thank you. Okay. And just in mind, we had a fallback position, but that, <coughs> that was at a cost, you know, five hundred thirteen thousand. So any any mitigation that we do less than that for acceleration, we're still okay. money ahead by going this route, and we should. You know, know well in advance if, if, it, if it things were that extreme that it's going to delay us 60 days we would be going with the other option with <coughs> and and should that play out we will keep the the board informed as to you know rough order magnitude costs for those different acceleration scenarios yeah, and the the real advantage that we have here is most of the time when this occurs I've, I've experienced many situations like this it's usually because the owner is delayed in giving a notice to proceed, and you're still you're still squashed against that have to open date, but you haven't let them let the contractor do anything yet because they don't have a notice to proceed. In this case, at least we have done that. So Moss is doing everything they can on their side to to gear up for uh, for a smooth start. Once so they're truly get hitting all that upfront construction administration, so that when we get the permit. Moss is ready to hit the ground right. Submittals and Ontario RFIs, libraries. as we've discussed, that's all really important for, okay. a, for a smooth start. Right. Thank you. Just um, one last thing. I, we did do the partnering session, um, and it was, I think, a good success. Um, we had the design team, probably about 10 of our subcontractors, the major trade subs. Uh, we established some goals for the meeting. Uh, you can see some of those up there that we identified. Uh, assume positive intent was one of the things that came out of the meeting um, always sometimes there's gonna be some bumps in the road and we understand that but we think that assuming positive intent that everybody has that mindset that we can work through any of those issues and South Florida Water Management District permit is one of those bumps in the road but I think we'll get through it and uh, the project will be successful for the team Groundbreaking, we still have that on the target for the 28th. Um, that's the focus. Uh, if there's any decision to change that based on um, any other outcomes of the permit, just let us know. But right now, that's we're gearing up for that. That concludes our update. Any right. questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you guys for coming in. <clears throat> Board, is there anything else? Further that you would like to discuss while we're here, Mr. Thacker, Mr. Washer, Mr. Soto. Okay, so we will adjourn our work. We'll have a scheduled meeting at 5:30, our regular meeting. Thank you, Mr. Thacker. We do have a pre-board arts moment that begins at 
five or five. Actually, I think it began a few minutes ago, didn't well, you? Well, <laughs> I've been hearing the warm up. <laughs>